for experiment 10, determining molecular weight of a volatile liquid. Uh, one of the methods that is practical in the lab to determine the molecular weight is use of ideal gas law. With the use of ideal gas law, the condition is that the, the sample that we are using must have must be volatile, must have low enough of a, a boiling point that it can um, act somewhat like a you know gas uh, or ideal gas. That would be ideal if it can it can act like a ideal gas. It cannot be ideal gas because it's liquid at room temperature. Uh, but temporarily we are changing to gas. We are measuring all the properties in the gas phase. And then we apply the ideal gas law in order to find the molar mass. Uh, what is ideal gas, uh, ideal gas law? PV equals NRT. In this equation, P is the pressure and it must be in at ATM, atmosphere. Uh, v is volume and it should be in liters. N is number of moles have the number of moles. R is a universal gas constant, 0 0.0821 or 206 liter ATM per mole per Kelvin. So if you pay attention to the, to the unit for R, that kind of dictates the unit for everything else. So you should know by this time that temperature cannot be Celsius, temperature must be Kelvin because this unit for R calls for uh, Kelvin um, temperature. And uh, N is number of uh, moles. If we rearrange this formula, we can find the number of moles of the gas um, with the condition that we measure or record the pressure experimentally. So we find this by experiment. We find the volume experimentally. And the lab manual, it tells you exactly how to measure. The video shows how to measure. The purpose of the pre-lab uh, is just to introduce what to expect from the experiment. And also, it covers uh, some, of the, some of the calculation. So when you're starting and answering pre-lab questions, you have an idea what the experiment is and how you're going to uh, to answer the questions in the, in the pre-lab. So these values are found uh, experimentally. Temperature also is found experimentally using a thermometer and measuring boiling point of the or temperature of the water from the hot water bath where we have the, where we have the flask for and the gas is placed in. And we have the value for R which is given up there. So if you find the number of moles using the experimental values found in the lab, then uh, we can also um, get the mass of the gas, the amount of the gas, because we are going to collect the gas in a flask. So we measure the mass of the empty flask. We measure the mass of the flask plus the gas. We subtract and we get the mass of the gas from the, the mass and number of moles, then we can calculate the molar mass. Molar mass is going to be, you know, if you rearrange this equation number three, if I rearrange it, molar mass is going to be mass divided by number of moles. So if we find the number of moles using the ideal gas law, and we also separately find the mass for the vapor, then we use this equation five to find the molar mass. Equation four combines the equation two and and the um, equation two and three, uh, but it's I I prefer like two step calculation. I find the end from the gas law, and then since the mass is measured uh, using this equation to find, I can use the rearrange easily uh, this definition of number of moles, which is mass over molar mass, and find the, the molar mass, because uh, this is calculated using the, using the experimental value. And this one is determined experimentally. So X 
uh, EXP would be experimentally determined, but this one is calculated. The pressure, the, it will be recorded in the lab. Um, and I want you to read the procedure from the lab manual and find out what is, which pressure is recorded, but the pressure is basically experimentally uh, found and is recorded in the lab volume, the same thing. Uh, using graduate cylinder, we measure the volume of the gas. Again, the instruction is given step-by-step step in, uh, in the lab manual. Value for R, we talked about it already. Temperature must be in Kelvin for ideal gas law and for every gas law. Temperature must be in, in uh, Kelvin. And uh, when you collect your data for this liquid, um, it just changes to gas, and you can report your uh, molecular weight. If the theoretical value for molecular weight is given, then you can calculate percent error. Percent error would be the experimental value for molecular weight divided by theoretical value times 100. If the um, theoretical value is not given to you, you won't be able to, uh, you won't be able to um, calculate the percent error. <clears throat> 